Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today, trust his ability to lead. And I really mean that. Today, trust his ability to lead. We might not always trust our ability to follow, but we should always trust the Lord's ability to lead. And that's by a very wise man, Jeff Carey. Proverbs 4, verse 11 to 13 says, I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the path of uprightness. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Quite a few years ago, a bunch of my friends picked up the sport of rock climbing. Before they climbed any mountains, they made sure to receive instructions in indoor climbing facilities under the instruction of a good teacher. Beginner walls provided color coding, left hand on the red rock, right hand on the blue, left foot on the yellow, and right foot on the green. Although there were obvious visual clues, the guides called out navigational tips from below. Novice climbers were thankful for their restrictive safety harnesses when they found themselves stranded halfway up the wall. Usually they landed in such a predicament because they weren't following instructions. As the students progressed, however, their instructors gave fewer verbal commands. However, the students were never allowed to leave their harnesses after all. Most amateur rock climbers protect themselves with tethers while scaling rock cliffs. Only the foolhardy head out to the mountain without a climbing partner, no matter how experienced a climber that person might be. One leads and the other follows. My friends were rescued many times during training. And very fortunately, those restrictive harnesses made it easy work for the instructors as they winched their stranded students back down to safety. My friends learned that if they were going to make it to the top of the rock wall, they would have to follow through on their instructor's instructions. As my friends advanced in their training, their instructors climbed along with them, pointing out new paths. The students were allowed to take the lead on occasion by choosing their own route up the wall. As they gained more experience and confidence, they learned how to work with their safety gear. They were no longer complaining about it. They could see their safety gear could be used for an advantage. While that rock climbing craze didn't last long with my friends, they did enjoy a few summers of rock climbing in the nearby mountains. If I am to grow in my faith and overcome the obstacles in my path, I have to pay attention to my instructor's voice and keep within the confines that he has put in place for my safety. And if I obey that voice of my guide, I will climb higher. Although I have to admit, I follow him imperfectly. I place my trust in his ability to lead and I know he'll always be there to catch me if I happen to take a wrong step here or there. Sometimes we can look at the Bible as a bunch of rules and regulations and we must do that and we can't do this and why can't we do this when that looks like a lot of fun. But in reality all of those areas that he asks us not to go into he does so because he knows he's got a better path. And the more that we follow after him, we'll begin to see the paths that he is leading us into. We'll be able to perhaps anticipate where he would want us to go. 
and it won't be so hard for us to discern what paths are going to take us off track and perhaps lead us into a little bit of a problem. So if you're not a very good follower, that's okay. God knows that. Ask him to help you to deal with that, to deal with any trust issues, to deal with a little bit of self-reliance, whatever that might be. But always trust the Lord's ability to lead and the Lord's ability to help you follow him on the right path.